Hey there! Today I'm going to share a painting with you and the process behind it. My intention was to create a small composition with a Joshua tree as the focal point. Here's the finished painting. I am blurring it out right now so that it will be a surprise at the end. Feel free to check out the time codes and skip to the end if you so prefer. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, I don't draw in a photorealistic style. To me, looking at something and drawing it as is is a pretty straightforward process, but figuring out how to translate a subject into a more simple and aesthetically pleasing form can be quite difficult. I have been slowly refining my simplistic art style over the years, but sometimes I still have trouble figuring out how to draw new subject material in my own way. There are just so many ways that you can draw a single subject. Even though I find Joshua trees to be weird and beautiful in their own way, when I draw them more accurately they somehow turn out more dull and drab than they really are, and that just doesn't vibe with my style. In order to figure out how to draw a Joshua tree in a way that is uniquely me, I started the same way that every artist starts, by sketching. I have some big old cheap watercolor pads, so I grabbed one, got my paint set up, and just started sketching and painting. Painting. Let's go ahead and discuss some of these sketches. So here you can see I laid down a flat wash of color and then did some colored pencil on top to simulate the leaves and I didn't bother with any contour lines. That just turned out to be a fuzzy mess, so I did not like that. Really the crux of the issue wasn't so much how to do the trunk, but how to do the leaves at the end of the branches. I was going back and forth between trying to do a more solid structural approach with more defined shapes, and sometimes I tried a more loose, sketchy approach. Here I was trying to play around with the idea of like a, a flat, spiky orb shape with colored pencil on top. That led to this idea here where I just created a flat circle as the center mass of the leaves and then added some colored pencil doodly lines on top to suggest individual leaves. And I kind of liked where I was going with that. So I played around with that idea a little bit more here. And then finally, I tried out two mini compositions here. This is the Joshua tree that appealed to me the most. So that is quite far from what a Joshua tree actually looks like, but the way I draw people is also far from what people really look like. So I felt like I was on the right track there. In addition to playing around with the Joshua tree sketches, I also did some cacti and succulent sketches, just playing around, I might as well. And in trying to reinterpret a prickly pear plant, I might stumble upon a solution for how to interpret the Joshua tree. So here you can see I was experimenting with pencil outlines, whether or not I wanted to fill out the entire shape or if I wanted to leave some white within the contours of the plant. You can see I experimented with um, colored pencil lines and with ink lines. I even experimented with the way that I drew the spines of the plant. I even ended up with this like white confetti pattern on this plant and I really liked where I was going with that. Experimenting like this is so important if you really want to find yourself as an artist. And you can't be afraid to make mistakes and make something really terrible. I mean, look at this. Look at this. What is that? I'm not real sure what I was going for there, but it ended up being a real hot mess. But that's what you've got to do if you want to figure things out for yourself. You make a lot of mistakes, but at the very least, you now know what not to do. And in the best case scenario, those mistakes end up being happy accidents. You stumble upon the solution to a problem that you didn't even know you had. And then you recreate, on purpose, that happy accident. And then you reiterate on it, and you reiterate on it. And finally, it becomes a part of your brain. It becomes a part of the way you look at the world. 
And that becomes your style or your voice as an artist. Although I would say that your voice as an artist isn't just your style, but also the message, the worldview behind your work. And I think you know what I mean. And just a little tip, you don't have to share your not happy accidents with anyone. <laughs> make hot messes just for yourself. And when you take those hot messes and you make hot not messes, then you go and share that with the world. I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore. Uh, talking to a camera is really hard. I have totally lost my train of thought. Finally, with this sketch, I felt I had found a cute, happy, simple, original way of drawing a Joshua tree. So I got on my iPad and worked out the composition. Once I had that final sketch, I printed it out and transferred it to a block of Arches watercolor paper and started painting. And now I will play the painting process footage for you. Thank you for sticking it out this far. If you liked this video, please give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. In order to figure out how to draw a Joshua tree, tree, I have some big old cheap watercolor pads, blocks, blocks. There is a spineless. If you liked this video, please give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe.